Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to talk about the Synod of Synodality and maybe one future outcome of this first session. Before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In the name of Filio, et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri, Filio, et Spiritui Sancto. Secutera Principio. Et nuc et semper, et seculi seculorum. Amen. Normally, I don't like to do uh, politics videos because it's really up there with the, 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 the kind of YouTube content creators that I think most Catholics shouldn't be watching, that it's all like apocalyptic doom and gloom and what's happening in the Vatican and all these things as I've talked about, we can't affect change in the Vatican. But I, I did want to give this projection. So uh, this prediction, I should say. So yeah, so part of me is like, but you know, once in a while, I. I want to do this. So I think going into this first round of the synod of synodality, people were, I would say people, because a lot of modernists were like, yes, affect change, bring change. But I'd say the traditionalists were like, you know, fingers crossed. And I even heard from the pulpit. I mean, I, I go to a pretty traditional parish and it's like, oh, you know, let's, let's hope this works out well. And I think after this first round, again, they're going to meet next fall and then we're going to have more of the pronouncements. Um, I think my prediction is this we know that this synod was the first synod and we've had synods since the the early early on in church history synods are just kind of like local convening of, of bishops but this is the first one that we've had lay people involved and i think this is kind of a trend of what the future is i think no doubt that future synods not just on synodality but other ones are going to have lay people involved and uh, even though in Vatican II we had the Peridi or the advisors, there were no voting members that were lay. I think if there's another council, wherever it's at, Vatican Vatican III, uh, I think there's going to be lay involved. And I foresee like this this encroachment of the lay because look, you see it in, you see it in, in the parish, you see it certainly in liturgy where the majority of parishes have extraordinary ministers. They'll have the lay people being the lectors. Um, you, you have this incorporation into it that you, you didn't see prior to Vatican II. And certainly the way the parish is run, um, there's a lot of pastoral associates that are lay. And many times these are women, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. But this is one of the things I always say, like, like, like the priests, why can't women become priests? And I'm like, well, look, we have an episode on this, but not to go off topic, but if you look at the typical parish, the typical parish is mostly run by women. It's really one by one. Yes, the, the priest, the pastor, is the one that can administer the sacrament. But as a whole, the pastoral associates, if you look at the typical bullet of, if, of any parish in the United States, it's mostly women that are running all of the, either the department of catechesis or the department of the, 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 the council or the, 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 if there's a Catholic school there, it's run by typically women. So either way. So I see this as a trend that it, I can see the church becoming conciliar. And we've had these movements before in the past. We've had these different bishops throughout history wanting it to be more conciliar. So yes, the Pope's the first among equals, but let's give more power to the bishops. And I see this conciliar trend, this council trend, going in the next 50 or 60 years. But I think with the conciliar trend, it's going to be with lay people as well. And I can almost see like a two-party system kind of like that they have in, in not two-party, but like a two-tier system like they have in England, where you have the House of Lords and the House of Commons. And the House of Lords is the higher aristocracy and the House of Commons are the lower level people. And I could see, and again, I don't, I don't, I don't think this is going to like, like administratively happen where there's going to be a name for two things. But I could see how like, yes, you know, the clergy have this particular role, but now the lay have this role and that lay role is going to increase, 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 increase. And I don't, necessarily know if this is a good thing if it happens again this is a wild prediction and i think a lot of the worst case scenarios going into the synod have not happened you know i think some people were worried that coming out of it there was going to be official not not rumors but official announcements saying that we're going to roll out female deacons or uh, communion for divorced and remarried catholics or whatnot. So none of that's rolled out in this interim time, but who knows? Maybe after they meet in uh, next October, they will have the, the, the official pronouncements, but things coming out of it and what Francis said about it, I've seen pretty, pretty conservative, but I think in the long run, it's less of what's going to come out of the synod of synodality and more of the trend that it's developing. And I think it's the increased 
role on not just in Rome or uh, but I think just in general in the church in church governance and I don't know if this is good or bad but this is my prediction of what's going to happen so if you look five ten years from now we're going to see the lay much more involved in church governance and I could be wrong guys post in the comments do you see an increase in the layization of, of church governance do you do you see this do you agree disagree I'd like to hear from you until next time take care God bless and pray mm -hmm.